Hello, Paul Ellis from the Rick Group here. I'm going to give you a webinar on our warehouse management solution for SAP Business One. And today I'm going to focus on picking a pick list from a production order. So the Rick Group was established in 2001 and we have customers all over the world using our warehouse management solution. With SAP Business One HANA, we use the service layer and our warehouse management solution is certified with HANA. With SAP Business One SQL, we use the DI API for integration. The majority of our customers are in distribution and manufacturing, and we've been a sponsor in the SAP SMB Innovation Summits in 2017, and we'll also be a sponsor for the 2018 summits coming up. We work with the SAP Business One Partner Channel globally, and we've been a part of the SAP APJ Growth Series. So why the service layer? There really is a great blog about using the service layer for SAP Business One HANA, and that link is below. So firstly, by using the service layer, our warehouse management solution is a loosely coupled application, meaning that we don't have to run any software where SAP Business One HANA is. It is a REST-based API for business objects and processes of SAP Business One. So any data that we push back into SAP Business One with our warehouse management solution will follow the SAP Business One business rules. There are two parts that we use. We use the service layer and we also use the XS Engine. XS Engine is used to retrieve data. And the reason we use the service layer is because of machine learning, mobility, Internet of Things and blockchain and ensures our customers are future-proofed using our warehouse management solution. For further information, contact us on our email address, sales at therickgroup.com, visit our website or YouTube channel. So let me get into it. Here I'm running SAP Business One HANA. I've got that on an AWS server. And what I have done is created a production order, 167. So the next step for me to release that to a pick list is I want to release this production order. So I'm going to update the status from planned to released and update that. From here, we'll go back into the production order, have a look at the latest one, 167 is now released. I'm going to right click and say generate pick list. When I generate the pick list, it tells me the pick ID number 480. So I know which pick ID we're looking at and what I'll do from here is I'll open up the Pick Pack Manager. And when I open up the Pick Pack Manager, I can select production orders. And we can see in the released section the production order 480, uh, Pick ID 480, sorry, for production order 167. So I can have sales orders, infantry transfer requests, reserve invoices, and production orders all through my pick pack manager and release them appropriately when I have stock. So now I want the warehouse management user to go and pick again this pick ID 480 and pick the raw materials for this production order. Let's go into our warehouse management solution. So you can straight away tell it's a browser based solution. It's going to work on any device, any operating system. So whether it's a tablet device or rugged device running Android, it's going to uh, open up and work fine. And here I've got Google Chrome operating. Production order, I can see straight away, 167 and document number, pick ID 480. If I drive into that, it's going to have the raw materials for the users to pick. So you can see here, here is the raw materials to pick for production order 167 and the items, the LM4029. Now, I'm going to go into these and pick these items manually. And you can see straight away, we've been led by bin location. And when I click on add, it goes to the next line and it's telling the user what the next item is to pick straight away. I could have multiple pickers picking this order, by the way. So it's a real-time warehouse management solution allowing multiple people to pick the one pick ID if that's what you'd like. So you don't have to have that. You could have one user at a time or multiple users in the same pick ID. Once we're completed, 
the system knows straight away and it sends back the information into SAP Business One HANA through the service layer. So let's go back into SAP and we go back through the Pick Pack Manager and we can now have a look at Picked and we can see the Pick ID 480 has come straight through. If I open that up and scroll across, you can see bin locations and picked amounts have all come through on the pick list. Now, if I want to, I can select all and say create and say receipt from production. And I can receipt that now and say yes. And the process has now been completed. So if I drive back into that production order and refresh, you can see now grayed out I have a look at the relationship map. I now have an issue for production and a receipt from production. So there we are receiving or picking for production orders and then completing it through the pick pack manager to create the receipt from production. Now the second part I'll show you is creating a purchase order and receiving that and just partially receiving, that's what I want to do today, is just partially receiving a purchase order. So if I have a look at the last purchase order I did, I can see 549 that's been closed. So I'm going to create a new one and I'll create it for Far East Imports, that is fine. And then I'm going to select an item, choose this item, and then I'm going to select R1 and R2 as well. So if I drive into these items, we can see here the package type is pallet and on the pallet is 48. So we've got a unit of measure and we can appropriately set up the barcodes to handle that, the different units of measure for these items. So I've got three items on this purchase order and we can see here the unit of measure for these two items is 48. So let's add that. So 550 is the purchase order number. Let's go into receiving. And so it will load up receiving. So again, I could have multiple people who load up uh, the receipt as well. So 550, if I want to just filter by Far East Imports, I can, and I can drive into that. So I could have multiple devices now scanning this, the goods that have come in off the container, off the pallets, scanning them one by one, and it will increment the quantities uh, all together. So the first item I'm not going to receive, and the second item is the uh, printer R0001, and we can see when we scan that, I've got the inner barcode, so I'm receiving one at a time, and the receive quantity is going up. Now I'm also going to receive uh, the second product here, the R0002, and again I'm scanning and the quantities are going up. Now I'm going to drive into that item manually because I don't have the pallet barcode in front of me, but I want to capture the remaining. So let's go back to the purchase order lines. So you can see here I've received the uh, R0002. 48 and I've received four of the uh, R001 and I have not received any of the R04. Note that the audit is real time so everything that we're doing, all the scanning, all the manual entry and everything that the users are doing is getting audit, uh, updated in the audit. And if I have a look at my admin function I could go into the receiving audit and have a look at what is actually happening in the warehouse without having to be on the warehouse floor. So I could see what the warehouse uses which is what the data is that they're capturing. So let's go back to the PA list. Once I've received the amount, the next step is to do a put away process. Now when I go into the put away, what we do here is it showed the open receipt, so the open ones. I could have users receiving the goods and users putting away at the same time. It's a dynamic receive and put away process. Because it's a real-time WMS, it's allowing the users to do that at once. So I could have someone receiving the goods, making sure they do the QA pro, uh, process, and at the same time having people do the put-away process. So let's go into 550. You can see straight away 
we've got the two products here we've got 4 and 48 now again I could scan the items and that will increment the quantities now I could also drive into them manually and I'm just going to put this item away as well so I've put four away in the selected bin location L01 which is the default bin location for this product now in the R02 product what I want to do is I'm going to scan a different bin location and you can see the L L02 and now you can see that the user is putting away the item into another bin location and scanning the item now if I want to go and scan another bin location they can do that as well so you can see straight away that I've got the pro ability to process multiple people doing a put away process with scanning the bin locations and scanning the item so we're ensuring that there's a hundred you know complete accuracy when we're doing this process so I'm just going to put the rest of the uh, products here I have to ensure that I put away the exact amount that I've received so if I go back here we can see the put away quantity equals the receipt quantity of 48 and 4 so we do have a ability to enable put away all so if you want to do a quick put away of being able to put away into a uh, a bin location or the default bin locations of all the products we do allow that and when you tick that you can say put away all so for now what I want to do is go back and I have received and I have now done my put away process and I'm going to complete now when I go and complete that will go and update SAP Business 100 through the service layer the purchase order that has been done so again I do the receiving process using the warehouse management solution and then I do the put away process once I complete the put away process I can then say complete and it will go and update SAP business one so straight away I can see that once I refreshed the third line uh, has been completely reseated and note because this was a uh, different unit of measure for the uh, second item we have a uh, remainder left over so you can see what I have received is the right amounts I've received 4 and 48 and a second item I put away into two bin locations so if you remember I put away uh, 46 and 2 so you can see here I've captured the right amounts into the bin locations or the corresponding bin locations that I did in my put away process so we have the receive process and then the put away process and the GPRO in SAP is updated uh, with the information that's been captured by the warehouse user thank you for listening I appreciate your time and if you have any questions please feel free to send them to sales at the thank you